ride into the realm of night, scorning surprise, or could we break our way by force, and at our heels all hell should rise, with blackest is insurrection to confound heaven purest light. These past, if any pass, the void profound of unessential night receives him next, wide gaping, and with utter loss of being threatens him, plunged in that abortive gulf, if thence he scape into whatever world or unknown region, what remains him less than unknown dangers and as hard escape. replied, O son, in whom my soul hath chief delight, son of my bosom, son who art alone my word, my wisdom, and effectual might, all hast thou spoken as my thoughts are, all as my eternal purpose hath decreed. Man shall not quite be lost, but saved who will, yet not of will in him, but grace in me freely vouchsafe. Once more I will renew his lapsed powers. Thou forfeit and enthralled by sin to foul exorbitant desires, upheld by me, yet once more he shall stand on even ground against his mortal foe, by me upheld, that he may know how frail his fallen condition is, and to me owe all his deliverance, and to none but me. Argument. Satan now in prospect of Eden, and nigh the place where he must now attempt the bold enterprise which he undertook alone against God and man, falls into many doubts with himself and many passions, fear, envy, and despair, but at length confirms himself in evil, journeys on to paradise, whose outward prospect and situation is described, overleaps the bounds, sits in the shape of cormorant on the tree of life, as highest in the garden to look about him. The garden describes Satan's first sight of Adam and Eve, his wonder at their excellent form and happy state. That lie bestrewn unsightly and unsmooth, ask riddance if we mean to tread with ease. Meanwhile, as nature wills, night bids us rest, to whom thus Eve with perfect beauty adorned. My author and disposer, what thou biddest, unorged I obey, so God ordains. God is thy law, thou mine, to know no more is woman's happiest knowledge and her praise. With thee conversing, I forget all time, all seasons and their change, all pleas alike. Sweet is the breath of morn, her rising sweet, with charms of earliest birds, pleasant the sun, when first on this delighted land he spreads his orient beams on herb, tree, fruit, and flower. 
glistering with dew, fragrant the fertile earth after soft showers, and sweet the coming on of grateful evening mild, then silent light with this her solemn bird and this fair moon. Waked by the circling hours with rosy hand unbarred the gates of light, there is a cave within the mount of God, fast by his throne, where light and darkness in perpetual round lodge and dislodge by turns which makes through heaven. Grateful vicissitude like day and night, light issues forth, and at the other door obsequious darkness enters till her hour to veil the heaven through darkness. There might well seem twilight here, and now went forth the morn, such as in highest heaven, arrayed in gold, imperial from before her vanished night, shot through with orient beams, when all the plain covered with thick embattled squadrons bright, chariots and flaming arms and fiery steeds, reflecting blaze on blaze, first met his view, war he perceived, war and precinct. Now night her course began, and over heaven inducing darkness, grateful truce imposed, and silence on the odious din of war. Under her cloudy covert both retired, victor and vanquished, on the fallen field, Michael and his angels prevalent in camping, placed and guard their watches round, cherubic waving fires. On the other part, Satan, with his rebellious, disappeared, far in the dark dislodged and void of rest, his potentates to counsel called by night, and in the midst thus undismayed began. Not diffident of thee do I dissuade thy absence from my sight, but to avoid the tempt itself intended by our foe. For he who tempts, though in vain, at least asperses the tempted with dishonor foul. End us, that must be our cure, to be no more, sad cure, for who would lose, thou full of pain, this intellectual being, those thoughts that wander through eternity, to perish rather, swallowed up and lost, in the wide womb of uncreated night, devoid of sense and motion. And who knows, let this be good, whether our angry foe can give it, or will ever, how can he be doubtful, that he never will is sure. But I should ill become this throne, O peers, and this imperial sovereignty, adorned with splendor, armed with power, if aught proposed and judged of public moment, in the shape of difficulty or danger, could deter me from attempting. Wherefore do I assume these royalties, and not refuse to reign, refusing to accept as great a share of hazard as of honor, 
do alike to him who reigns, and so much to him do of hazard more, as he above the rest high honored sits? Go therefore, mighty powers, terror of heaven, though fallen intend at home, while here shall be our home, what best may ease the present misery, and render hell more tolerable, if there be cure or charm to respite or deceive, or slack the pain of this ill mansion, intermit no watch against a wakeful foe, while I abroad, through all the coasts of dark destruction, seek deliverance for us all. This enterprise none shall partake with me. Some I have chosen of peculiar grace, elect above the rest, so is my will. The rest shall hear me call, and oft be warned their sinful state, and to appease the time the incense deity, while offered grace invites. For I will clear their senses dark, what may suffice, and soften the stony hearts to pray, repent, and bring obedience due. To prayer, repentance, and obedience due, though but endeavored with sincere intent. Mine ear shall not be slow, mine eye not shut, and I will place within them as a guide my umpire conscience, whom if they will hear, light after light well used they shall attain, and to the end persisting safe arrive. This my long sufferance and my day of grace, they who neglect and scorn shall never taste. But with resolution to their fall, overhears their discourse, thence gathers that the tree of knowledge has forbidden them to eat of under penalty of death, and thereon intends to found his temptation by seducing them to transgress, then leaves them a while to know further of their state by some other means. Meanwhile, Uriel, descending on a sunbeam, warns Gabriel, who had in charge the gate of paradise, that some evil spirit had escaped the deep and passed at noon by his fear in the shape of a good angel down to paradise, discovered after by his furious gestures in the mount. Gabriel promises to find him out ere morning. Night coming on, Adam and Eve discourse of going to their rest. But wherefore all night long shine these, for whom this glorious sight, when sleep has shut all eyes, to whom our general ancestor replied, Daughter of God and man, accomplished Eve, those have their course to finish, round the earth by more evening, and from land to land in order though, to nations yet unborn. Ministering light prepared, they set and rise, lest total darkness should be night, regain her old possession, and extinguish life in nature and all things, which these saw fires not only enlighten, but with kindly heat of various influence foment and warm. Temper nourish, or in part shed down, their stellar virtue on all kinds that grow, on earth may be hereby after to receive perfection from the sun's more potent ray. And found already known that he for news and thought to have reported, Gladly that he mixed among those friendly powers who him received with joy and acclamations loud, that one that of so many myriads fallen, yet one returned not lost. On the sacred hill they led him, high applauded and present, before the seat supreme, from whence a voice from amidst a golden cloud thus mild was heard, Servant of God, well done, well hast thou fought. tried, now known in arms not to be overpowered, companions dear, found worthy not of liberty alone, too mean pretense, but what we more affect, honor, dominion, glory, and renown, who have sustained one day in doubtful fight, and if one day, why not eternal days, 
what heaven's Lord had powerfulest to send against us from about his throne and judge sufficient to subdue us to his will, but proves not so. Then fallible, it seems, of future we may deem him, though till now omniscient thought. Supposed not incorruptible of faith, not proof against temptation, thou thyself with scorn and anger wouldst resent the offered wrong. Though ineffectual found, misdeem not then, if such a front I labor to avert from thee alone, which on us both at once, the enemy, though bold, will hardly dare, or daring, first on me the salt shall light, nor thou his malice and false guile contemn. Subtle he needs must be who could seduce angels, nor think superfluous others' as aid. I from the influence of my looks receive access in every virtue in thy sight. More wise, more watchful, stronger if need were of outward strength, while shame thou looking on, shame to be overcome or overreached, with utmost vigor raise and raise unite.